you've seen the title, you know what we're talking about. I have to make an apology. I made another video earlier on talking about how to select an astrophotography camera. Now I didn't say anything incorrect in that video, but what I didn't get across enough was that the CMOS versus CCD debate is one where the gap is closing. And we are seeing cameras now that basically perform just as well as CCD cameras. And even though you would probably prefer a CCD for photometry or academic usage, the pace of change and the range of cameras coming out now with CMOS chips are absolutely amazing. And they are definitely a worthwhile option with results that are just as good as a CCD camera. So this is a bit of an apology to all the CMOS fans out there and for people using the ZWO cameras, I'm gonna put this camera through its paces and I'm gonna show you the results that I got. And I have to say, they're not bad. My name is Dylan O'Don and you're watching Star Stuff. So I got asked in the comments if I make any money from astrophotography. <laughs> no. So this video is sponsored by Bintel. Bintel are Australia's largest astrophotography and astronomy shop in Australia. And I can speak about Bintel with authority, not just because I'm a customer, but because I'm the web guy. That's right, I have a day job. I built this website, I do all the space weather, I write a lot. You can check out customer images and you can submit your own to win a $25 gift card if you are featured. I also wrote the Bintel Astronomy Setup Calculator and Simulator, which you can use to test cameras with various telescope focal lengths and eyepieces and see if they work. There is a narrowband preview tool, which I also wrote, which lets you upload three images in hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen and combine them in every possible permutation to see what you can get. It's a good starting point. You can ask them questions online about astronomy and gear and browse their huge range of products. So shout out to Bintel, thanks for your support. There's a lot more good stuff coming from these guys. If you've been following the camera releases from ZW, oh. you'll notice that it's sort of like a file version numbering system. They've got a lot of different cameras and a lot of different numbers and a lot of different letters. This one is the ASI 1600MM Cool or Mmm Cool. And that basically means it's mono and it's cooled. Now you need the cooling to do deep space stuff. You don't need the cooling if you're doing planetary but you do need this fan and this Peltier system to keep that chip cool so that you can take noiseless images of deep space with long exposures. This camera uses the USB 3 connector, the big fat square one. It has power, which you do need for the cooling to work, and it has some USB ports that you can use to chain other devices off. It also has the desiccant tube, which you would need if you were doing really long sets of exposures over a whole night and you find that the temperature differential between your imaging setup and the outside temperature causes condensation and that can fog up the chip in here it can actually cause damage as well so desiccant tube is something I've never had to use but something to consider if your weather conditions or your temperature conditions require that sort of a thing when we see the orange adenized metal we think of Celestron we see the red we used to think of software bisque but I think these days we're starting to associate the cool red finish with ZWO. This company has just been growing in leaps and bounds over the last few years and it's easy to see why. Their camera range isn't just high performance, it's actually very well priced. And I'm going to be comparing this camera to the QHY9 which is the very popular Kodak 8300 chip and that chip's been popular for a long time but is it going to be knocked off its pedestal by this one? Maybe. I compared these by doing an image run on the same target to give you a one-to-one -one example of how they perform. So in a way, this is sort of a CCD versus CMOS video as well. So how did it go? Let's find out. Okay, so here's a horse head that I took uh, maybe three years ago now. It's early work, it's not my best work. It's a bit noisy, but you can see a lot of signal. This is taken by that QHY9 CCD camera. And bear in mind, this camera is twice the price of the ZWO 1600. And this one was about two years ago. You can see I'm getting better with my processing, but also a CCD camera. And here I've mapped the hydrogen to blue, which I think looks amazing. This is also Hyperstar, so we're shooting at F2 here. I think this, these were um, three minute subs. And this one is using my 
9.25 edge so I'm not using the Hyperstar, I'm not using Rasa, I'm not using F2 this is uh, shot at F6.3 so it's really nice and up close and you can still see that the CCD camera does really very well and I'm doing a lot better with my processing here um, 12 months ago now Check this out. This is a 10 minute sub that I did just a couple of weeks ago using the 11 inch Rasa and the QHY9. So it's a deep exposure. This is a 10 minute exposure. And I was so surprised at how well it came out. Um, this is uncalibrated, so you can still see the noise, the natural noise of the camera uh, coming in. This is a CCD result. Bear that in mind. Now, check this out. Here is the same exposure with the same telescope, same temperature, except on the ZWO 1600mm. There is a magnificent amount of signal there. This camera is half the price of this one. Now this one looks a little sharper, but that's because on the night I had a little bit of wind, which made the stars a little bit blobby in this, unfortunately. But this comparison still lets us see that the amount of signal is still really, really strong on the ZWO 1600. So, Let's have a look closer and just look at the noise profile. You can see here we've got some hot pixels here. And you can see the ZWO has much smaller pixels. So side by side, the horse head looks a lot bigger on the ZWO 1600. And the noise is actually very manageable. It's a different kind of noise profile. We've got these big hot pixels here on the CCD. And on the 1600, we just sort of have this blotchy noise. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot more subtle, but it is still there. Now that doesn't matter on either camera. On either camera you pull out that noise anyway by using your dark frame calibration. These are uncalibrated frames. But you can see at half the price of a CCD camera, this ZWO1600mm performs really, really well. And I do want to go ahead and keep using this camera with the Rasa and see if I can get some really good finished results out of it. And that's the that's a basic processed one, but you can see the color obviously didn't come from the 1600mm, which is a mono camera, so I just overlaid some old color data onto the image. But you can see deep exposure, the RAS is performing beautifully here, pulling all that signal. Uh, and there wasn't that many exposures either, I think this is a stack of about 10, so 10 times 10 minutes or 100 minutes. Um, now that's a massively deep exposure, but the whole point of this exercise was to show you that the ZWO1600mm is a really good camera, the cooled version of course for deep sky and what can I say, the results speak for themselves uh, obviously I wish that these stars hadn't elongated because of the wind that night but still this is a very very capable camera <music> the last thing I wanted to show you which is the noise profile between a CCD camera and a CMOS camera. As you can see the CCD here is on the left we have a bit of a glow on one side of the chip and we have these very distinct sort of hot pixels there which will get removed but the non-random noise is uh, is pretty smooth like it's fairly noiseless and the CCD performs well. You can see that the noise profile on the ZWO very very noisy it's not quite that big bright spot that we get but there's this speckle that goes all the way through so it is a noisy camera CMOS does have a way to catch up to CCD however as I said before that doesn't really matter because you are going to pull all these out with the dark frame calibration anyway so that stuff doesn't end up in your image at the end of the day and if that means that saving one thousand over a thousand dollars on a camera for deep sky imaging I really think the ZWO1600MM and the other ZWO deep space cameras are true contenders. We can use them. And there you have it. The test results are in. The ZWO1600MM cooled. I hope you enjoyed this review. I enjoyed using this camera and I intend to use it a lot more. I do have a RASA to keep going with the testing for. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. ZWO. Oh.